Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I wanted to take a look at where the average of the Iowa caucus polls had been in relation to the numbers that we actually got on the day of the election. Now, you can see at the bottom of the screen, these are the average of the Iowa caucus polls that we're getting from 538. And then the numbers that we have here at the top of the screen are from the first alignment. And the reason why this is the best alignment to compare to the polls is because the pollsters, when they ask these individuals the question, who is your top choice, who are you going to support in the Iowa caucus? That best coincides to the first alignment when these individuals showed up at their caucus site and put their support behind their first choice. This is the best comparison that we can do for the purposes of this video. So we'll see who outperformed, who underperformed. And in general, it's actually almost universally the case where you're going to get more of a percentage to the outperform than underperform as a whole. And the reason why this happens is because a number of these polls give the option of not being sure who you're going to vote for, but then these individuals make up their mind and then cast their ballot for their top option on the day of the election. So just that contrast there it tends to be a situation where you have a bit more to the outperform side, but then that also throws in a dynamic where if you're underperforming the polls, it's even worse than it might seem at the surface level. So we're going to start off here with Bernie Sanders, who is leading in the Iowa polls at 22.2 percentage points. And then on the day of the election, he picked up 24.75%. So he outperformed by about two and a half percentage points, doing pretty well there on the first alignment. Then we can see Joe Biden. He was actually second in the polls at 20.7 percentage points. And we'll see if this tends to be the case or not for Joe Biden as we work our way through primary season. If the pollsters are oversampling his particular voters, that was definitely the case in this instance. He did the worst in this contrast here where he was at, again, 20.7%. He ended up only picking up 14.95 percentage points. So he was really a clear second place in the polls, but then he ended up getting a clear fourth place in the actual result doing about 5.8 percentage points worse than where the polls had been for Joe Biden. And if this is something that continues going forward for Joe, where he's underperforming where the polls had him at, that puts him into a situation where maybe the fact that over this entire past year, the fact that he was the clear front runner in terms of the overall polling averages might not be as much the case as what it would appear based on that polling data. So then the next option here was Pete Buttigieg. His average was at 15 Point seven percentage points, and he outperformed more than any other candidate where he ended up picking up 21.29 percentage points. So he did about 5.6 percentage points better than where his average had been at. That was the biggest difference. And then also, in terms of doing well in a caucus, it's all about having extremely committed supporters because it's more difficult to participate in these caucuses and that can also make it so the polls are a little bit more difficult to get them extremely accurate because the candidates that have people are more politically active or more engaged and committed to them can definitely outperform where these polls had the race at and then also just in terms of having a really strong ground game and getting that vote out which the Bernie camp as well as Buttigieg and Warren had a bit better than the other campaigns that was also likely to help them in this instance but Buttigieg he outperforms quite a bit we'll see if he's able to do that or not in the next result in New Hampshire it'll be interesting to see if this is something that he can carry over into that next contest and then we had Elizabeth Warren her average was at 14.5 percentage points she ended up picking up 18.4 percent and she actually did quite a bit better than I was expecting, able to even pass Joe Biden again, who was second in the overall of the Iowa polls in contrast to what we actually had on election day, which was quite a different story. She was about 3.9 percentage points better than where her polling average had been. It's really an unfortunate situation, particularly for somebody like Elizabeth Warren, who put a lot of effort in to Iowa and almost none of the stories have been about her. It's been all about Bernie and Pete competing at the top for the delegate lead. And then it's also been about how poorly Joe Biden did. So you have this whole media narrative that's talking all about the successes of Sanders and Buttigieg, the failures of Biden, whereas Warren actually did pretty well for herself here, but not quite well enough to kind of push herself into that upper tier, getting into that top uh, tier conversation. So then we had Amy Klobuchar. She was rising in the Iowa polls leading into it. She was able to get up to about 10.1 percentage points. And then on the day of the election, she was at 12.73. So she outperformed by 2.6 percentage points, very similar to the outperform that we had from Bernie Sanders, for instance. And then the next option, Andrew Yang, his average was at 3.7%. He ended up picking up 5% on the day of the caucus. Now, he was in a very unfortunate situation where he didn't get to the 
15 percentage point threshold in many caucuses so on the first alignment he was actually doing relatively respectable but then that number absolutely cratered going in to that final alignment where his individuals had the option of either not supporting any of the other candidates or giving their second choice uh, in that final alignment. So he ended up outperforming by about 1.3 percentage points. And then the final three tallies here actually all underperformed, and they were still very low in the polls going into it. So you had Tom Steyer at 3.6%. He actually underperformed by 1.9 percentage points, where he picked up 1.75%. And then you had the next option here was Michael Bloomberg at 1.2%. He only picked up 0.1% on the day of the caucus, so he underperformed by 1.1 percentage points. And then Tulsi Gabbard was at 1.2, and she only ended up picking up about 0.2, so she underperformed by 1 percentage points. Kind of interesting that the individuals on the lower tier of the polling were the ones that underperformed even more so than the low polling numbers that they were even bringing at coming into the election day. And also something interesting here were the two billionaires, Tom Steyer and Michael Bloomberg. They have this ad campaign going on. Now, it is fair to say that they have not put in the kind of effort into Iowa that they're putting into a lot of other areas. But we'll see what kind of actual top support these candidates are getting that essentially are getting a lot of that support from these ad campaigns that they're putting out there. We'll see if it's as solid and committed as what we're getting from these other candidates. Not a great sign from the billionaire candidates in this instance with both Steyer and Bloomberg underperforming those numbers where they had been at, but perhaps not the best comparison for Iowa again because Steyer and Bloomberg hadn't put in the resources to have success in Iowa like they have done in some of these other areas that are upcoming. So that's the story that we have here coming out of Iowa in contrasting the poll numbers to what actually happened where you had many of the individuals outperforming like a Mayor Pete, an Elizabeth Warren, a Klobuchar, a Sanders, whereas Joe Biden significantly underperforms where his polling numbers had been at. And I don't think that's a great sign for Joe Biden going forward. It could certainly be a situation where the way these polls are taken might be more favoring his types of voters as opposed to some of these other candidates. And if that continues to be the case going forward, then it could be a situation where Joe Biden continues to disappoint and have a negative media narrative, which could hurt his chances as possibly being that front runner that we've seen from him over this past year. So I appreciate you guys stopping by. Consider subscribing for more. I hope to see you back here for my next video.